the pressing issue of climate change, which is a major economic issue for governments, businesses, and of course, millions of people around the world. India is currently working with fellow G20 countries, Italy and Indonesia, ahead of its assuming the G20 presidency next year. The adoption of sustainable finance is a priority area for India when it leads the G20. And I'm delighted to say now that I'm joined by Sunil Mehta, Mr. Sunil Mehta, in fact, your official title. He's the Chief Executive, Indian Banks Association. So thank you so much for being here and for joining for joining the studio, Cybos TV, because um, I hesitate a bit because you've just reminded me about how quickly time has passed because we met for the first time in Sydney as <laughs> the Cybos there. And of course, you've got the absence because we had the, the COVID virus, but now here we are again in Amsterdam. So it's very good to see you. But look, there was a time when sustainability and its importance in the financial world didn't really register in conversations. And of course, all of that has now changed. And I just wonder what your reaction to that is. Well, as a responsible uh, community, uh, we have to think about our future generations and the sustainability is a very important aspect because we leave, so we leave the same uh, level of assets and resources for the next generation and we have that responsibility for them. Gradually, this has acquiring a lot of traction because uh, globally this is discussed and the India participated uh, and our PM has announced that uh, maybe uh, by 2030, uh, we will be acquiring 50% of our energy through renewable sources. And then by 2070, uh, the, uh, so uh, we, we will have be zero uh, carbon neutral. So now uh, to achieve these goals, I think the India is gearing up and uh, that is our responsibility because uh, uh, unless and until uh, we, we are responsible uh, and the banking system uh, plays an important role, uh, ultimately green financing can facilitate the environment conservation as well as the uh, sustainability of the businesses. So I hope it is a very important uh, aspect and uh, India is now geared up to take it up. I do uh, agree that yes, uh, right now uh, we are at a very uh, nimble footed, uh, we are just uh, uh, developing this as a concept, but going forward, uh, I think that's the one the entire country is looking for. Especially with 2023 and, of course, the, the assumption of the G20 leadership as well. But when you look at India, how would you say that the sustainable banking, uh, the, the, the concept of sustainable banking in the country has actually evolved? And what else do you see as its main concerns? Because there is the morality that you just alluded to, the responsibility to the generations to come. What else is there in that evolutionary journey? So in this evolutionary journey, actually, uh, the entire framework has got uh, two major aspects. One is uh, environment, another is sustainability, and the uh, social and the governance uh, aspects also. So uh, India, yes, uh, uh, is uh, working uh, on the creating a taxonomy about how do we uh, define what are the different uh, aspects of uh, the environmental changes, how do these environment impact the businesses and the banking decisions. And uh, it requires a lot of database and which is yet to be created. So I think the, the India is right now relying on the global data which is available on the climate risk uh, which threatens the various businesses. And uh, uh, I've been uh, uh, in interactions uh, with a lot of global bodies to, who are uh, handling this uh, climate change as a, and sustainable financing as a uh, important aspect and embedding it into the lending processes. So uh, in India also we have created one group uh, that is, uh, uh, we call it as a standing committee on uh, uh, sustainable financing. And that standing committee is now working on, uh, first thing is awareness, like unless and until the entire ecosystem gets aware that yes, we have a responsibility for the next generation and we have to uh, go for uh, environmental protection, uh, then uh, the uh, adoption will happen. So we are at the awareness level, awareness uh, for which uh, uh, we are organizing various seminars, we are conducting uh, disc uh, discussions in involving the international experts. How do uh, we uh, adopt uh, the sustainable financing? Most important aspect is uh, quantifying it and then um, measuring it, quantifying it, and then uh, finding the uh, remedial solutions, just like uh, mitigations, that how do we uh, mitigate that climate risk and then how do we support it? Because just uh, by uh, talking about it and making aware is not enough. We have to incentivize it also. 
So unless and until we incentivize the system and the industry uh, for adoption of the uh, climate changing systems, like uh, uh, wherever you have to go for a um, system uh, which prevents the uh, uses of the resources, which stops the uh, carbon emission and those processes are supported uh, not only uh, technically but also the financially, uh, then definitely uh, this is going to evolve a, a better ecosystem for green financing. Mm. I want to focus as well on the Sustainable Development Goals, also known as the SDGs. Now, why is the environmental d dimension so important to the success of the Sustainable Development Goals? And what happens if we don't reach them? Because, you know, there is that deadline. It's in the 2030s. And some countries perhaps are on course for it, others not. You are right. I think uh, uh, the entire world is at a, uh, different levels of evolution in this uh, sustainable goals and uh, sustainable goal journey. Uh, the b biggest aspect of it is a climate risk because a uh, sustainable goal cannot be achieved uh, without uh, ad addressing the environmental issues. Uh, now, now, the biggest challenge which the entire world is facing and I have uh, attended the um, uh, conferences at uh, uh, Paris also and the uh, different geographies uh, where they, it is being deliberated. And what I could find is still there is a lack of standardization into the uh, mapping of the impact of climate change. Like how do we correlate a, a event with the climate change? How do it impact a business? So such, uh, dependable uh, data is still uh, not uh, available. And so it takes time in creating that framework where you can standardize the data, uh, when you can rely on the data and quantify it. And that quantified data can be converted into uh, certain uh, incentive structures. Uh, like uh, uh, carbon emission has been in talks for so many years and then uh, carbon credits are made available, but that is uh, only one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to bring a look at the uh, social impact of it also, like how do it will impact the society? Uh, because India, which is a, a very uh, diverse um, uh, a society in which uh, second largest in uh, uh, population in the world and then fifth largest economy and uh, uh, such a varied uh, type of uh, geographies. So we have to see the social impact of it also because once you go for a climate change aspect, how it is going to impact the society. So now, right now, uh, the country is working on creating the taxonomy, taxonomy of the environmental changes, like how do we uh, classify them. Then we are working on the common uh, um, collection of the data where the environment is impacting the businesses as well as the, uh, the economic impact of it. Then how the environmental um, the preservation uh, will impact the socially. So that is a, another aspect because quantification of the uh, social impact is a very difficult job and uh, th that is also being worked out. And uh, I hope the way the country is uh, going forward and the uh, country's leadership like uh, our PM has made an announcement then India is going to be the chair of the uh, G20 in uh, 2023. So India is geared up to adopt those changes uh, create in their own uh, because every every country will have a, a different set of uh, climatic conditions, a different set of uh, requirements and different, different type of mitigants. And we have to create and customize it to uh, the country. <laughs> mm, but all eyes are on India next year. Okay. Mr. Sunil Mehta, we have to leave it there, but thank you so much for joining us here on Cybos TV. And please do enjoy the rest of the Cybos event.